Brother Ray's girlfriend back in church with us. That other gal he's been bringing to church, she didn't quite fit in as good as this one. <laughs> Amen. And uh, there's a really funny story Sister Stephanie would like to share with everybody. After church, if you'll just allow her, I'm sure she'll be super excited. She has a new name. There's a new name written, not in glory. <laughs> Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're happy to have Sister LaDonna's daughter. I can't remember her name. It's been so long since I've seen her. But, uh, hon, we're so happy you're with us tonight. Amen. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Good to see Brother Chris and Sister Stephanie's other child with us. Amen. He used to be two, but now he's just one. Amen. Good to have Dylan with us again tonight. I guess you're leaving tomorrow. Amen. They'll keep you. Brother Chris will do anything to get some more on the taxes. Just hang around. Amen. He'll find a way. Amen. I was getting out of the shower last night. My wife come and cracked open the door and said, uh, laughing time's over. We'll take you to the set. I'll make you come sit up here with me. Garrison, I'm talking to you. We'd, we'd heard some conflicting news earlier, didn't understand what it was, and she cracked the door, and she mentioned his name and said it was him. He, he took his own life. First time I saw him, he had a, he had a cap on, and he's a white fella. He had an afro back in the day. Uh, black bushy hair that stuck out on side. His hat really wouldn't stay on his head all that good. And I thought today, uh, I didn't even know Scott and Al were in the driveway, and I came around the corner, and all I did was see Big Daddy out there. That's my daddy. Out there in the middle of the driveway slobbering because Scott rode up in that 49 Jeepster hot rod, loud pipes, and Daddy was just standing there staring at it. And one of the boys come and run and talking about this cool cars in the driveway. And then I had to come around the corner. You know, I'm, I'm going to run, and then I see it's my friends, and i got to slow down and be cool myself, you know. You can't act like you like it when it's your friends, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he was happy-go-lucky, carefree, just the night before. He and another guy, y'all probably kids nowadays probably don't know what a wheelie bar on the back of a three-wheeler is, but he had a wheelie bar on the back of his three-wheeler and he had snuck in out at the school making laps wide open, popping a wheelie and getting the security all messed up, happy-go-lucky, having a good time. And somehow life caught up with him last night and he decided he couldn't live anymore or he'd be better off dead or... As I read in one person's well-meaning Facebook post, maybe he decided his family would be better off with him dead. Whatever the reasoning, uh, it's not an accident that we have presently, and, and this is just our little square acre of God's little creation, but if you follow the news, it's happening almost every day. Somebody takes their own life or they, they kill their, 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 their significant other, spouse, husband, wife, and children. Or it, Virtually every day somebody's deciding, choosing death rather than life. So I started asking myself, as I got out of the shower and Amanda came, opened the door and said it was him. I was really hoping that it wasn't. Because the name had been messed up the first time we got the news. And, um, I, I kind of felt like in my spirit, Lord, enough's enough. Enough is enough. I have got to. And I'm going to give you the, 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 the main thought, kind of like the, the Shazam moment of my message right now. But saints, we have got to get to the place in God where we can cut that stuff off at the pass. You following me? We got to get to the place in God where we're so in tune with the Spirit that He's saying in my mind and quickening to my heart, you need to call your old buddy. Right. 
I, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I know it's Wednesday night and and all, but uh, I feel the Holy Ghost, and I I hope I hope by the help of the Lord to wake us all up this evening and realize that what we have in us is not just kind of a neat way to illustrate the Lord, but we actually have the power of all the creation residing within us, and He is activated according to our faith. I've preached the last two Sundays about faith. But I want you to notice what the Bible says in Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 27. Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 27. There you go. To whom God would make known. To whom God would make known. You understand that, that there is a solution that many people just don't even know about. Do you understand that? To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. He wants to make known the mystery. I talked to a fellow today, he's not here tonight, had something else to do. But he was telling me about going to another church of another denomination, if you will. And uh, He said, I got mad when I heard him preach such and such, such and such. And I said, you can't get mad at them, they don't know. Oh, they know, they've read the Bible enough, they know they just won't do it. I said, no, you don't understand. The Bible says if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. The God of this world hath blinded their minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel of truth should shine in unto them. Okay, they, they don't know. The deceptive power, and I've referenced it twice lately, but the, this, the power of deception is so strong that the Bible says <coughs> if they would have known who Jesus was, they would have crucified Him. And the question I have to ask myself in hindsight how could they not have known? He raised the dead. He opened the blinded eyes. He made the dumb to talk. He made the, you know, uh, the deaf to hear. He walked on the water. You know, he breaks open one boy's dinner pail and feeds 5,000 people. Ain't nobody else ever done it like that before. But they crucified him because they didn't know. The reason why so many people. I'm about to get where we live in just a minute. So if you're a nervous type, you might all of a sudden remember you left the stove on or something. Or maybe the water running in the bathtub or something that you need to go home and check. Because it, it might get a little real in here in a few minutes. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. What does that mean? That means specifically a group of people who had no hope before Calvary. The glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. How in the world do you take this scripture and say that the Son and the Holy Ghost are two different things? Do I need to go a little faster tonight? Well, I'm not, so hang with me. If you find yourself getting sleepy, and I'm not, I'm not joking right now. If you find yourself getting sleepy, get up and walk around. Then the two things will happen. You won't be sleepy no more, and I'll know you was. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You can't end it all if you still have hope. You've got to understand and see this. What the world needs, and, and I don't want to dumb it down, and I don't want to make it so elementary, Brother Billy, and I don't want to make it seem so basic and so trivial, but what the world needs is a baptism of the Holy Ghost. The world needs a baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the reason why so many of them are not getting it is the, the conduits of the Holy Ghost are lacking in what they're supposed to do. Because the book does say, 
He that believeth on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. We got to stop praying the Holy Ghost coming out of the mountains, coming out of the clouds, coming out of the sky, coming from some great speaker or some great prophet or some great theologian and recognize that the power of the Holy Ghost is intended to come from us. Verse 28. Whom we preach, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Whom we preach, warning every man, God have mercy, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Complete, whole, lacking nothing, fully mature, fully grown, Living in fulfillment in Christ Jesus. Mark 4, 35. And the same day when the even was come, when it got to be evening, the sun's going down, he saith unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. In the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. It's Jesus and his disciples, they're in a boat. And he's pushed out a little bit from the land and he's taught a little while. And, and then it came time, he, after he gets through teaching the disciples a bit, Sister Leanne, he says, Come on, let us pass over to the other side. And before I go any further, I went right down past the cliff that the hogs run off of. I went through the road of Gadara on the other side. Everybody say the other side. Jesus and the disciples are in the boat and the Lord says, Let us pass over unto the other side. And so they go, Brother McKinney. They start heading off that away. Jesus who undoubtedly has, is exhausted from the preaching and teaching, etc., that he's done, he lays down and goes to sleep. And while he's sleeping, a great storm comes up. Clouds, wind, lightning, thunder, rain, you name it, it's there. You want to say a tornado came? Can't prove it didn't. Think of the worst storm, maybe even like today, Brother Pete. It's, it got a little bit squirrely today. The wind whistling and a whirling, the lightning comes down, great big booms and stuff happening. It's storming. The, the waves are about to swamp the boat. The disciples go wake Jesus up and say, What? Master, carest thou not that we perish? We're going under. You better wake up, brother. Get the bailing, get out of the boat, something. Now you have to remember, you're seeing it in verse number 35. I know I've preached a whole message about this before, but it's way different tonight. Jesus, when they got in the boat, said, let's go over to the other side. Before they made it to the other side, there was a great storm. And they decided, Brother Larry, that they needed to wake Jesus up because everything was lost. Carest thou not that we perish? I'm going to meddle with you tonight. I am. I'm going to probably hurt some of your feelings tonight. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus rose up. I may have the order out just a little bit, but it's not important. It did happen. He says, where's your faith? Rebukes the wind and says... Peace be still. And there was a great calm. I've always been amazed. I preached about it. And the Lord told me one time, speak to the storm. Jesus said, let's pass over to the other side. They didn't make it when they thought they ought to make it. And the storm came. The storm came into their life. And it upset Jesus so bad. Do you all see the irony? Do you see the irony? Jesus says, Sister Maria, 
Jesus says, do you think some of the problem that we may be battling in our life is we ain't been hearing too much of what He says? Because Jesus said, let's, let's go to the other side. Let's, us, that's all of us, pass over unto the other side. The disciples just knew they weren't going to make it. Because the storm came. And Jesus is asleep. And the storm doesn't wake him up. So they decide to wake him up. Man. Boy, I could do some preaching right now. If the Lord's give you a promise, and you're in the middle of a storm, what are you crying about? Let me tell you something. If we're going to impact our world, I preached about this a little bit the other night, but I, I, I Tom Sawyered it up a little bit. Whitewashed it just a little bit. It's coming off tonight. Do you know what's stopping many of us from reaching our world and the way we being tapped in to the Holy Ghost as far as the needs of others? Do you know why we can't do that? Because we need to be delivered from selfishness first. What, what do you think they're thinking? Let's see this. I got to tell a joke now. Kind of get even stuff out. Look at here, Sister Leanne. They're in the boat. Let me tell you a cool thing. I saw one of these boats. They they have uh, they have excavated one of these boats, and it's in a. You can't even touch it. It's in a in a cold place. It ain't very big, Brother McKinney. I saw one of these boats from about the same time. It, it's not all that big, but it's it's really neat. It, it was amazing to see. But they ain't. Like, maybe from me to that wall from one another, Brother Pete. It ain't like an ark or nothing. It's a little fishing boat. Can you see the disciples all just working? Feverishly throwing out water and, you know, driving a belly and moaning and throwing stuff out. And, and, and the Lord is asleep. So then somebody decides, Brother Billy, what? We better wake him up. Never thinking. The reason why he's still resting is he ain't worried. They're afraid, and then they look at oh God. I want you to see this now. But he's gone. If you're about to go to sleep, wake up. I want you to you see the accusatory tone. Master, don't you care that we perish? What they think's going on with him? If the boat goes down, he's going down. But all they're worried about right then is we. You want to have a sister? They totally forgot. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say they didn't forget. They just didn't receive it in the way he said it. Let us pass over to the other side. They forgot where they came from and they forgot where they were going. You've got to be kidding me. Hold on just a minute. Somebody can leave me the microphone on. forgot where they came from and where they were going because of a little rain. And everybody say it together. He wasn't worried. Hallelujah. 
They forgot where they came from. And they forgot where they were going. Because of the storm that was taking place in their little old poor pitiful lives. And the Lord didn't even care. I mean, let, me let, let me let you know something. I'm, not, I'm going to try not to exaggerate. But somewhere around five times I have been told in the last two weeks, the Lord don't care about me. By different people, some of them don't even come to church. The Lord doesn't care about me. But Jesus rolls up. I said this here the other night. We got to get over ourselves. If the Lord said it, let's pass over, Brother Pete. Guess what? You better stay in the boat. Because it's Him in the boat that's going over. Mm. I don't know if we're quite receiving this. I'm, I'm thinking... You know what would have been the smart thing to do in the Spirit? What would have been the smart thing to do in the Spirit? That's not the answer I'm looking for. What did our text say to us tonight that the Holy Ghost was? The glory, revelation of the glory, the, the mystery of the glory is Christ in you the hope of glory what would have been the right thing to do spiritually speaking what oh if they're that worried about the storm but if the Lord says you're going over why are you worried what's Jesus doing what would be the best thing to do in the middle of a storm why not why not? Huh? Anybody think about that? Well, somebody's got to bail and somebody's got to do this. Jesus says, fellas, we're going over. I'll wake up when we get to the other side. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? we got to stop doing what we would do and start doing what He does. He ain't worried. He ain't worried. Look at here. Well, I want to worry. And I want to fret. And I want to work. And I want to bother the Lord. And this was going to be a good message. Good thing I ain't done yet, huh? Look at here. Wonder how in the world. Think about this just for a minute. Give me Mark 5 and 1. Mark 5 and 1 says, And they came over to the other side of the sea. Jesus said, Let's pass over. What did they do? They made it over. But what happened in the meantime? They bit all their fingernails down to the quick. Are you feeling me? They fretted and they worried and they, they, they got all tore up and they got all upset. And the worst thing they probably did is they interrupted Jesus' nap. He did not calm the storm because the storm was... He didn't calm the storm because the storm was stopping him. He calmed the storm because the storm was bothering them. I'm telling you, the Lord ain't worried about what's going on in your life. He's not perplexed. He's not afraid. He's not telling the angels, all oh, get together. we got to figure out something to do about this. We ain't never worried with nothing like this before. Because then they passed over to the other side. The Lord said, let's pass over to the other side. It wasn't so He could calm the storm and calm the wind and stop everything and then they would believe more that He was God. Because the Bible said, and they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. 
Now, I told you a while ago, it was kind of cool when we come around the corner of that bluff and our guide said, you are now in the country of Gadara. And right there is the cliff that the hogs came over. And it's a cliff. It's grassy. It's not like the cliff you see in the Archie comic books. But it's, it's a cliff. And in the country of the Gadarenes. Now look at here. Give me verse 2. If this don't, like old Ronnie said one time, on a tremendous message called Raise the Roof, 1983, Lafayette, Louisiana. If this don't stir your soul, your spoon done fell out of your bowl. Talk about Ronnie Henson. Some of y'all people don't be knowing who that is. You should. You're missing out. Oh, God help me. You know, if we don't wake up, it's coming again. You're going to get a phone call. You're going to see something on the news. You're going to see something come over Facebook again. But it ain't the problem. It's a result of the problem. The problem is, is that the Holy Ghost filled people have become so consumed with surviving themselves that they forgot that the Lord said, let's go to the other side. When he was come out of the ship, immediately. Look at here. <laughs> I want you to see this. Can, will you allow me a little bit of evangel evangelistic liberty from from my mindset? Think about Jesus. He's asleep. He jumps up, rebukes the wind, and then rebukes them. And they come to the other side. The disciples are rejoicing because they just came through the storm. And immediately there met him out of the tombs a man, everybody say a man, with an unclean spirit. Lord have mercy. As far as the disciples were concerned, the victory's already been won. Why? Because they made it through the storm. Their poor little old wretched behinds has been saved. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Do, do you ever feel like sometimes in the Bible, hang with me right now. Do, I feel like this a lot of times in the Bible. That the Lord, if he would have had as much carnality in him as I do sometimes. That he would have told the disciples, you fellas has got to be the most stupid people I've ever been around in my life. They were ignorant. Thick headed. You know what they were? You know what they were? They were consumed with themselves still. Brother Billy, think about the goofy stuff. You know that James and John, their mama even came to Jesus and said, Do you, would you let my two little old boys sit next to you, one on the right and one on the left, when they get to heaven? They would get to fussing and stuff about which one of them was the greatest. We're talking about the disciples of Jesus. Remember the dumb time? I preached about it before. He fed, Brother John, he fed 5,000 with one little boy's five loaves and two fishes. Then he turned right around and fed 4,000 with seven loaves and a few fish. Then he tells the disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And guess what they just said? I guess he's talking about we don't have no bread. How dumb can you be? The, oh God have mercy. The Lord ain't worried about no bread. Come on. He tells them throw your rod and reel out there and bring in a fish. There's money in it. He ain't worried about you not having no bread. 
We got to get over ourselves. We got the Holy Ghost. How is it that we're acting like people that don't even have the Holy Ghost when we've got it? We're all time crying. 